Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin. These men spoke up for what they thought was right. From their courage came such documents as the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. States. From their willingness to speak what was sometimes unpopular but right, we enjoy such liberties as freedom of speech, the right to keep and bear arms, and freedom of religion. There are those who still wish to oppress our freedoms, and there are still patriots willing to stand up and defend life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Men like Zeb Bell, who honor our founding fathers and what they stood for. It's now time for Zeb at the Ranch, speaking up and defending your freedoms. Brought to you by Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers and all of the other great advertisers on the program. And now, Zeb Bell. This morning on the program, as we lead into the Independence Day 4th of July weekend, I have chosen these words of the late, great John Wayne from his album, America, Why I Love Her. Face the flag, son, and face reality. Our strengths and our freedoms are based in unity. The flag is but a symbol, son, of the world's greatest nation. And as long as it keeps flying, there's cause for celebration. So do what you've got to do, but always keep in mind, a lot of people believe in peace, but there are the other kind. If we want to keep these freedoms, we may have to fight again. God forbid, but if we do, let's always fight to win. For the fate of a loser is futile and it's bare. No love, no peace, just misery and despair. Face the flag, son, and thank God it's still there. John Wayne. Good morning, everybody. Here comes Kate Smith, and God bless America. Good morning on a Thursday. We need a caller to call in with our Pledge of Allegiance. Have a good one. Ah, the great voice of Kate Smith, and God bless America. Thank you so much. And right now, this is Zeb at the Ranch. I'm Zeb Bell with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you, along with some of our great advertisers like Western Way Services, always at your disposal. Call, get on the route service today, 734-6969. Right now, without further ado, let's go ahead with our Pledge of Allegiance leading into this interview. Independence Day weekend. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Yes, sir. How are you? Great. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, with liberty and justice for all. Makes you feel good, doesn't it? It does. God God bless you. America. Uh, I couldn't agree more. We're going to be talking about that quite a bit today. And, Doug, God bless you. Call back in a little bit. I'd love to visit with you. Okay. All right. Thank you much. Right now on the program, it's time for the weather forecast brought to you by K&R Rental, 256 South, 600 West of Hayburn, and the number to call, 678-3122. They're open Monday through Friday, 7 to 530, Saturday 7 to 2, and they've got all the equipment, all the tools you need for any job, from forklifts to lawnmowers. Get on over there, and they are also a Honda engine dealer. All the parts that you might need for your wheel lines, K&R Rental. Hey, Gina, come on in here. Give us the weather. Today and tomorrow, fairly mild as we get into Saturday and Sunday. Temperature rising up into the 90s. Here's your weather forecast for Zeb at the Ranch. Lots of sunshine for today, a little on the breezy side. Winds out of the west, 10 to 20 miles an hour. That wind is not helping the wildfire suppression as we experience about five different wildfires going on in our area. So if you're wondering where all of the smoke is coming from and it's affecting your breathing, be aware that there's Lots of fires going on. Sunny skies for today. High of 78. Tonight, clear skies, low 48. Tomorrow, sunny and 83. Looks like sunny and 90 for Saturday. Close to 95 for Sunday. 
That's your weather for Zebeth Ranch. Appreciate it, Gina, and brought to you by the gang over at K&R Rental. Really knowledgeable people, very experienced folks. They've been in business since 1979. K&R Rental, 256 South, 600 West of Hayburn, 678-3122. Hey, let's sell some cattle, Merv May. Come on in here. All right, hey, good set of steer calves there. Here to get all our 31 moment hands. That's the chant of the world's best auctioneer, Merv May, at the Burley Livestock Sale Yard, 1100 Occidental Avenue in Burley. Number to call for cattle consignment information and sale information, 678-9411. Merv May, Cade, Rocky, Lance, Udy, the sale that works for you. Today, going through the ring, here's a partial list of some of the cattle. Chet Bracket of Three Cricks, bringing in two semi-loaded cows. Antelope Hills Dairy over at Burley, 40 head of butcher cows. Boot Jack Dairy up at Shoshone, 24 head of butcher cows. Acme Dairy at Oakley, 20 head of butcher cows. And the trailer line run. Merv would also like to say thanks again to all the dairymen in the dairy business. And he supports June Dairy Month. Thank you for all that you do. Sale time at 11 o'clock this morning at the Burley Livestock Sale Yard, 678-9411. Merv, sell those steers. All right, hey, good set of steer calves there. Here to get all our 31 woman at a hand, 31 woman at a hand, 32, 2 and a half, 3 and a half, 134, 4 and a half, 5 and a half, 5 and a half, 135, 50, 135 and a half, 7 dollar 35. Zeb Bell gets the bottom again. I uh, love that bottom price. I'll tell you what, that's a lot higher than I've ever got in the past. Hey, here we go on a Thursday local day. We've got a lot of things going on right here in the Magic Valley that we're going to highlight. And uh, first of all, I want to say thank you to two wonderful people that have been visiting us for the last couple of days. Uh, Rick Lehman and Sandy, I appreciate it. And Rick is a former classmate of mine. As I said on the air the other day, in high school, the last time we saw each other was graduation 1965. So they're out here visiting. We had a wonderful time. Big barbecue last night, and I want to thank them. Thank them so much for being here and the gift they left me with. Thank you so much. Right now, I want to remind you that we got a lot of things cooking here today, along with your calls and all your interests. So give me a jingle on the landline, 436-224-4186-927-4587. Thanks. Go out again to Ramsey Heating and Electric at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley, 6780459. They get down there, unlock the doors, throw them open for you at 7.30 in the morning, Monday through Friday till 5 all those days. And they've got all your heating and electrical and cooling needs. You better believe it. It's going to get hot, hot, hot this summer, and you better make sure your air conditioning is working efficiently. Check out all the air filters. Keep them clean. It'll keep you cool. Ramsey Heating and Electric, 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley, where they provide warm winters and cool summers. Before I get rocking here a little bit in our first subject matter, I also want to remind you, uh, boy, I would love in the morning before this program to be able to go to Denny's America's Diner and have one of their great, phenomenal, fantastic breakfasts. And uh, not only the breakfast, but I want to play up all the lunch and dinner menu and that great new line of burgers. Ooh, really tasty. You're going to love the food. You're going to love the people. The service is fantastic at Denny's Restaurant, 611 North Overland and Burley, and 291 Pole Line Road in Twin Falls. Yup, yup, Denny's Restaurant, America's Diner, and the home of Zeb's Lunch Bunch. Your turn. Come on on a Thursday, everybody. Give me a jingle on the landline. Love to talk to you. Donald Trump is really coming forth on his campaign promises. I heard a little excerpt this morning early on the news that uh, some of the things that are going on, some of the legislative items that are going into effect, uh, especially the 90-day ban. Now, this might be offensive to somebody, but uh, look at the whole card. It's for our protection. The 90-day ban from those six countries in the Middle East goes into effect tonight. Tonight. And uh, also a severe and well-needed crackdown of illegal aliens coming across our border. Might be the angst of the left and the liberals and the Democrats. That's tough. And uh, also a real crackdown 
on the havens across this United States. It is complete idiocy to think that there is any merit or good or well-being to provide a sanctuary city for people that are illegal aliens and or doing illegal things. And for all the buffoons out there in Radio Land that are absolutely adamant that they support illegal aliens and sanctuary cities, in my own humble opinion, you are nothing more than a traitor to this great United States of America. As I said, the travel ban goes into effect tonight. And I was listening very carefully yesterday to the words of former FBI agent John Legato on my program. And I don't know if you heard the entire interview or not, but one of the questions I asked him, and I'm doing this in a paraphrase this morning, if you want to go to my website and listen to that segment that was on yesterday, you feel free to do so. But he made it poignantly clear that we, the United States, need to have a severe crackdown and severe vetting system for anyone coming into this country and he made the point that any young males 18 to 23 24 30 whatever coming in here alone no we need to know exactly who these people are why they're here what they're going to do where they're going to have work etc we need to think of us first that's not being selfish we need to think of us first and if you don't like that toughness, you're living in the wrong country. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, Zeb. It's really nice you were talking about your friend from Wisconsin, you know, that people you haven't seen for a long time really mean a lot now, don't they? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. The thing I wanted to talk about is something that started a long time ago in that's Joe Scarborough. You know, he started out as a fine young man in, from Florida and run for Congress and got elected as a Republican congressman. And he spent the first two years trying to make things right, and he knew the swamp was not going to go away. And so he left politics, so supposedly, and went to work for MSNBC as a conservative side of the film. And then you had this Mika Brzezinski. And yes. Nunes, yes. And he did a pretty good job at first. I used to enjoy listening to him. But you talk about somebody who has made the wrong turn. Well, you know why he made the wrong turn. Keith, you know why he's made the wrong turn, don't you? Don't you? No, I mean, they're getting married. They are? Yeah. I mean, you talk about, and I'm going to be very poignant. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Keith, wait a minute. You talk about strange bedfellows, and I mean that in the poignant terms. Uh, they're getting married, and so, yeah, I mean, somebody that's going to make you a cup of coffee in the morning, you don't want to be criticizing as a not-too-bright Democrat or liberal in the evening. I, you got to be careful, Keith. What are they trying to be, a Mary Madeline and, and that loudmouth? Husband of yeah, the, you know what, though? I don't even want to get into their personal relationships or whatever. Politics is all that matters to me. And the way that they approach the media and a way that they serve the news. Now, I'm not as concerned... Wait a minute. I'm not as concerned about Mika and Joe as I am about the trash that's going on at CNN. CNN, as a whole entity right now this morning, is in, to use the words out of... Uh, one of the Buford uh, stories, they're in a heap of trouble right now this morning. They've got so many lawsuits that are being aimed at them, one just in the last 48 hours of over $100 million. CNN is teetering on the brink. Their boot heels are hanging over the Grand Canyon. Well, and here's my take on CNN is, is first you start out with doing the wrong things, and then you start losing some of your listeners. And then your supporters or advertisers come on and 
they're not happy because they're not getting their uh, message across. Yeah. And so when they leave, it is over. Well, you know, there's so many things, items, and issues that are going on at CNN right now. Honestly, I think this network, CNN, as was once respected and revered as the news network, is nothing more than a joke, and it's not a funny joke. Keith, I've got to run. God bless you and Nancy, and if I don't get a chance to talk to you before the holiday recess, I want you and your family to have a blessed Independence Day weekend. Thank you so much. Yeah, and you you're, you run such a nice bed and breakfast. When are we invited out? <laughs> as soon as I can stock up. Okay, thank you. Later, okay, goodbye. Calls welcome four three six two two four four one eight six six nine two seven four five eight seven. I remember it wasn't that long ago. I called a guy on the phone, and it was after the program was over, and he really railed at me. He said, "Why do you watch Fox News? Why do you listen to those people?" And he said, basically in summing, he said, CNN's the only news source that really gives a compelling, really uh, non-biased approach to the news. I'm going to call him this weekend sometime, and I'm going to ask him if he still feels the same way when all these different charges against CNN are now coming to light. Uh, there was one, and I've got a report on this this morning, as sickening as it is. Caller, stand by. I'll be right with you. That on June 3rd this month, Riza Oslan from CNN, listen to this. This came across the wire service yesterday, who has eaten a human brain on live television, called Trump a piece of... And an embarrassment to mankind. We're talking about the President of the United States. They would have never come close to even using the same verbiage when it came to President Obama. Never! And look at the garbage that's being spewn by these people at CNN. Caller, I'll be right there. Stand by. I just got to get this in. Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation, 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley. Number to call for an appointment, and you should, 678-1191. 678-1119. I said it wrong. 1191. <laughs> I've only said that number nine trillion times, and the old fat boy messed it up. Burley's number, 678-1191. Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation. Get back on the alley, Zeb. You're rolling in the gutter. Here we go. And they can help you with all your exercises. And if you've had an accident or a sprain or a strain or whatever, healing up from a surgery, they are the best. With their physical therapist, I know because I go there. And they've got the only hydrotherapy pool in the area. Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation, 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley. Absolutely the best. Also, real quick, I want to remind you, the Burley for <laughs> Rupert Fourth of July celebration is off and running this weekend. Man, oh man, is it going to be fun. And we had some folks on the air with us the other day. They're going to have Mutton Bust, and they're going to have a patriotic program on July 2nd featuring members of the Idaho 25th Army Band. They're going to have lawnmower races. They're going to have great food. They're going to have super entertainment. What are you waiting for? Jason Gibbons and the whole crew over there at the Rupert Fourth of July Committee, they're saying, come on over to Rupert for Independence Day weekend. The Fourth of July activities are going to be festive, along with a huge parade. Don't you miss it. Fun over in Rupert on the 4th. Caller, good morning and thank you for your patience. Morning, Zeb. Uh, today at the Burnley Senior Center, we're having prime rib dinner. Five bucks for any or everybody. And it is super. You can't buy a better prime rib dinner than what they put on. You know, Joe, I'll tell you what, I'm going to be trying to aim over to Burley later on, and a prime rib dinner, holy smokes, I, I tell you what, I know you're going to be first in line, but save me a little bit and I'll try to get there. All right, well, if you don't make it right at 12, why they serve and until about a quarter to one, but last, we have this senior appreciation day in prime rib once a month. The last month, couldn't have been better, and it's going to be that good or better this time. All right. Well
well, Joe, you are the official uh, uh, speaker system for the great dinner going on there at the Burley Senior Center. And God's blessings to you. And, Joe, it's good to hear from you again. Thanks for calling. I'm Rev for five bucks. Woo! Thank you. All right, there you go. That, Joe is just one of the greatest guys, and I have so much respect for him, and I thank him very much for calling in. Calls are welcome, 436 2244 one 927 4587 You can't make some of this stuff up that CNN has been accused of. The, the big charge this morning, of course, is uh, you probably know the story about Steve Saramucci. Steve Scaramucci, a kind of a liaison to the Trump administration. Well, they, CNN and other news sources, had accused him of visiting and, here we go again, colluding with the Russians. Well, first of all, that story was deemed and found out to be completely 100% false, phony, and fraud. So Mr. Scaramucci, a person that does not, take meddling into his personal fears uh, fears as uh, something just loose cannon. He went after him, And he sat down with the people at CNN, and he said, if you don't retract this story and label it as completely false and fake news, you're looking at a $100 million lawsuit. Hmm. Son of a gun. CNN retracted the story and said they were wrong. It's going to take more of this. People are going to have to stand up and say, I think you better do some retractions. I think you better do some tweaking. I think you better do some honest and credible reporting, or we'll see you in court. Calls welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. I got to pay some bills and then I want you to call me. Come on. I get lonesome sitting here all by myself. Barry Equipment and Rental, sales, service, and parts. They've got all the equipment to get the job done. Equipment rentals, retail equipment sales. By the way, they've got all those Bobcat excavators in all shapes and sizes. And boy, I tell you what, if you don't know how to run one, you've never run one, never used one at any time, they've got a great big sandbox out behind the business and they can teach you and then you can go home and you can just really have some fun Barry equipment and rental south lincoln in jerome <coughs> excuse me for the cough addison avenue west in twin falls and 159 west highway 30 in burley you just go on in there or give them a call find out talk to them about your needs they can help they will help Barry equipment and rental 159 west highway 30 in burley super nice people All right, callers, come on. Let's get the ball rolling here on this Independence Day weekend, the 4th of July. Absolutely looking forward to all the festivities, all the parades and the ice cream and the warmer temperatures and families getting together at picnics and then maybe going to the park or going fishing. Oh, it's a great weekend. Don't forget, too, the lovely Dr. Christine Pickup of Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. And I've talked to a lot of people the last couple of days about Mount Harrison audiology. This hearing screening, absolutely, it's not going to hurt you. You're not going to sit there and wince and, oh, don't hurt me. No, it's fun. It's really kind of fun. All you have to do is call and make an appointment and find out what your hearing weaknesses are and let her help. She can. Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids, right across from the Minidoka Hospital Emergency Room. Number to call for an appointment, 312-0957. You call them now. All right, caller. You know, when I was giving this uh, excerpt on CNN, A good friend to this program, Peter Hassan, that writes for the Daily Caller back in D.C. and then also New York. And he published a report this morning on CNN that I'd like to share some of the highlights, or in this case, the lowlights, of what CNN has done in the last little while. The last 30 days have been nothing short of a public relations nightmare for CNN. The network is reeling after a brutal stretch that has seen two hosts taken off the air, 
One story retracted, another one rewritten, accusations of stage protest, yes, stage protest, the resignations of three key employees, and most recently an ongoing series of undercover videos meant to portray CNN as misleading the public about the Trump Russia stories. In other words, CNN is a liar. And they finally got rid of Kathy Griffin, the idiot so-called comedian that uh, held up a mock severed head of President Trump. They dumped her. Well, that was a good thing. And then I go back to this deal on June 3rd. And I'm not making this up. I did not, and I was not aware of this. And I don't know the reasons why it happened on CNN. But... On June 3rd, CNN host Reza Aslan, who has eaten a human brain on live television. Well, what were the circumstances for this absolutely repulsive idiocy? I have no idea. And then on the program, she called Trump a piece of, and you can fill in the blanks, and also an embarrassment to humankind. If that is the kind of journalism and reporting that is going on at CNN, I wish them nothing but the worst of luck in their endeavors. And then, two days later on June 5th, CNN was forced to address claims that it staged a Muslim anti-ISIS protest after video emerged on CNN reporter Becky Anderson directing protesters where to stand with their signs so they could be better seen by the cameras. Can you believe this? It's unbelievable. And then CNN ran a story on June 6th. Boy, they had a great week, didn't they? that claimed former FBI Director James Comey would use his testimony the next day to refute Trump's claim that Comey had assured him three separate times that he was not under investigation. That was another story that was debunked. And people put their trust, whether you're sitting in an airport or a train terminal or at home at night, they put their trust in this kind of trash? They put their trust in CNN? It is of no reason or consequence why I do not ever hardly turn them on, because I do not trust them. The Wolf Blitzers and the rest of this lying crew really are the providers of false and fake news. Your calls are welcome, 436-22-441-866-927-4587. Hey, Wheels, while I'm waiting for a phone call that I know is coming in, let's hear this for the Silver State Stampede. Once again, Wheels, can I hear this good word for the Silver State Stampede? Edward. Nevada's oldest rodeo. The Silver State Stampede roars into Elko July 13th, 14th, and 15th for family entertainment at its best. This PRCA rodeo brings you the thrill of professional riders going head-to-head in one of the world's toughest sports, rodeo. The action kicks off Thursday with the annual kickoff party featuring mutton busted, Old West Bronc riding, tri-tip dinner for just 10 bucks, and an extra dose of the world-famous Ring of Fear. Head into Friday and Saturday. Saturday for PRCA Rodeo Action with the award-winning Wild Child Rodeo Clown and Dance the Night Away with the Jeff Palmer Band. So gather your friends and get your tickets today for the 2017 Silver State Stampede, July 13th through the 15th. And don't forget to wear your pink for Tough Enough to Wear Pink Night on Saturday. Family entertainment at its best with the 2017 Silver State Stampede at the Elko County Fairgrounds. You'll pay for the whole seat, but you'll only need the egg. We are going to be talking to Alki Merilluch down in Elko in the last half-hour segment of our program today about a fantastic getaway for everybody, and that's going to Elko for the Silver State Stampede. It is a lot of fun. I did that rodeo for many, 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 many years. The committee, the people, the location, the event, all of it, just a lot of fun. All right, calls are welcome, 436 Did you hear about this goon that down in Arkansas took it upon himself of getting behind the wheel of his car and drove to the site of the new Ten Commandments monument 
that was erected on the grounds of the Arkansas State Capitol Wednesday, yesterday. And he backed his car up and hit the monument as hard as he could, destroying it. Michael Tate Reed, 32 years of age, was streaming this on Facebook Live as he did it. He was really proud of doing what he did. Well, fortunately, they got this loony bin arrested. And there's another story, another slam against our Ten Commandments, which is the derivative of our laws. I'm going to stop and say that right now. I am so sick and tired of hearing these loony bins come out of the woodwork and say, well, you can't have that, separation of church and state. No, you can't have the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments is the basis, really, check it out for yourself, of our law system in this country. Being founded, of course, on Christian principles. And for these loonies to go and do this kind of thing, and he stood there when he had his picture taken at the police um, jail site, smiling and happy as a lark that he had done this not only once, but he had done it again previously in 2014. And now the uh, city, the capital, is going to be looking at a cost of about 30000 in rough figures, round figures, and $30,000, and the Ten Commandments display was only up less than 24 hours. What are your thoughts on this? You know, little by little, inch by inch, I'm just afraid for churches that perhaps have a Ten Commandments display in front of their church, or the Christian cross prominently displayed, or anything biblical. Because these loons out in our world today that are anti-Christian and spewing all this hate, they will almost do anything to take and tear and crumble them down. Your thoughts, give me a call, 436 2244 And former, there was a little humor injected into the seriousness of this story by former Arkansas Governor Mike Huckabee when he said that an idiot all at once had broken all Ten Commandments. <laughs> Caller, good morning, you're on the air, thank you. Well, you got my attention on your last little story about the guy that desecrated the Ten Commandments. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. I have read a book several times, and I just can't, I have to read it every so often, about the man who declared that he hated the United States so bad that he didn't care if he ever saw it again. And I'm sure you're familiar with it. Yep. And they put this guy on a boat and took him out in the ocean, and he had to be on that boat until he died. And I guess in his journal he said he never wanted to see anything so bad again in his life as to see the shores of America. Chris, I think people who do that kind of thing need to spend a working vacation in some hot country for at least two years where they don't have um, air conditioning. You know, Chris, I... I'm glad they'll be able to see when they come to the shores again. Yeah, and you know, i got, I got to inject this here. I don't know how much you have traveled around the globe. I don't know how many times you've left this country to go to another country. I have left this country many times for various speaking engagements around various countries in the world. And I cannot tell you, First of all, how saddened I was that I had to leave this country going into unknown situations. And then upon being in those foreign countries, how absolutely ecstatic I was when I had the plane depart the runway to come back to the United States. This is the greatest country in the world. This is the greatest country with the greatest laws and regulatory means and methods set up by our forefathers and given to us through blood, sweat, tears, and lives. And for these people that hate this country so bad, I will absolutely on this program write out a check to help get them on any plane on a one-way ticket because get them out of here 
Yeah, and I think they should go to some of those Arab countries where um, they would really find out what freedom is. Well, we're going into the 4th of July weekend, and I myself, and my good, good friend from high school, as you probably has heard, uh, we haven't seen each other for 52 years. 52 years since graduation day. Wow. I hope you recognize each other. Yes, we did. And uh, it was so pleasant to visit. But you know something? That is part of the American dream, you know, of growing up and, and going into various parts of the United States, diversifying, keeping in touch with one another, wishing each other well in your endeavors. And in other countries, tell me that they get the same semblance of hope and uh, career choice as they do here. Nowhere. Nowhere else in the world. And I'm sick and tired of these crybabies not really respecting what they have. Well, and you, I think I've said it before, our family has hosted seven kids from other parts of the world. And when you have these kids in your home... And they get to talk out loud about um, the United States and their homeland. And none of them were from any countries that were really, really taught. But anyway, the kids, every one of them would have loved to have been able to stay in the U.S. But we said to them, you know what, if you like what you saw in the United States, go home to your country and help change it. Because we can't all come to the United States. You know, I absolutely applaud your family. I know quite a bit about your family, and I want to extend to you and yours the blessedness of a great family occasion as you celebrate Independence Day weekend and the 4th of July activities. Thank you for your call. Thank you for your listenership, and have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. And thank you, Jen. You do a lot of good. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. I tell you what, I get pretty emotional when I read that opening with John Wayne and from his album, America, Why I Love Her. And then I hear about these goonies that go out and do stupid things like driving over and trashing our Ten Commandments or ripping our flag off a pole, stomping on it and burning it, or some so-called funny girl like Kathy Griffin doing something so stupid as to get a mock-severed head of Donald Trump, a bloodied head, and holding it up for the cameras. Any number of things that the left does to perpetrate hatred for this country and its values. I'm absolutely enraged. And I looked at the flag, of which there are many in this office. I haven't counted them all, but I bet you I've got probably over 15 American flags in this office. And I'm so thankful for what I have. I've been so thankful for what has been given to me. And I'm not ashamed at all, as big and tough as I try to act. But when that flag passes by on the 4th of July, or I hear that national anthem, or I hear that Pledge of Allegiance, or I hear Kate Smith and God Bless America, you're doggone right, my eyes well up with tears. Because I'm so thankful I live here in the United States of America. Time for our weather forecast, and the weather is brought to you by Riverview Urgent Care and Medical Center at 382 North Overland and Burley, Twin Falls Urgent Care, 2392 Addison Avenue in Twin, and Jerome Urgent Care, 133 West Avenue A in Jerome. It's true, minor emergencies, major care. The doctor will see you now, not in four or five days, and it's open seven days a week. All of them are. You better believe it. You get the care for the sprains, the the strains and the sprains and the cuts and the abrasions, they can help, they will help. Minor emergency, major care, Riverview Urgent Care, and Twin Falls and Jerome. Urgent Care's serving you. Right now, here's Gina with the weather. Today and tomorrow, fairly mild as we get into Saturday and Sunday. Temperature rising up into the 90s. Here's your weather forecast for Zebeth the Ranch. Lots of sunshine for today, a little on the breezy side. Winds out of the west, 10 to 20 miles an hour. That wind is not helping the wildfire suppression as we experience about five different wildfires going on in our area. So if you're wondering where all of the smoke is coming from and it's affecting your breathing, be aware that there's 
Lots of fires going on. Sunny skies for today. High of 78. Tonight, clear skies, low 48. Tomorrow, sunny and 83. Looks like sunny and 90 for Saturday. Close to 95 for Sunday. That's your weather for Zebra Duran. Always a great job. Thank you, Gina. The Urgent Cares. Riverview Urgent Care in Burley. Twin Falls Urgent Care. Twin Falls and Jerome Urgent Care. It's true. Minor emergencies. Anyone in your family, major care. You stop in and see them today. Be careful out there this weekend, please. All right, calls are welcome, 436-224-1866-927-4587. Did you, you want another story about CNN? Oh, my gosh. Now, now, they are using Elmo from Sesame Street, the children's program. And they're using Elmo to broadcast to the children about how we should be accepting of refugees coming into this country. Oh, come on. Uh, Sesame Street has had a long history at looking at issues from a child's perspective, and given the staggering number of children who are displaced today, they thought by using Elmo as a kind of a crying approach to the American public, oh, Elmo said it's all right to let all the refugees in, so we should do it. It it absolutely drives me nuts that they would go to the children, to make the appeals through a children's programming of Sesame Street and a character of Elmo. Oh, your mommy and daddy are wrong. They shouldn't harbor such feelings against all these refugees. Let them all in. Elmo says it's okay. This is exactly what we were talking about yesterday with the FBI agent John Legato. We have got to protect ourselves. We have got to protect our shores. We have got to protect our society and our government. And it's not through an open-door policy. Y'all come in. That isn't going to work. All right, give me a call. I'm surprised some of my dear listeners haven't called yet this morning. 436-224-1866-927-4587. Good morning. You're late. Good morning. Well, good morning. I'm uh, glad to call in today. I heard you just talking about Elmo, and so here's my little take on that, and that is that, you know, I think that, and people are going to be up in arms over this, And but I think that Sesame Street has been indoctrinating our children for years with a liberal mentality, and when I was a young mother, I didn't really notice that or see that until later on. And so it does not surprise me at all to hear this story that you're telling us about with Elmo taking part in that because it's just part of that liberal uh, indoctrination of our children. And the problem with this, or the thing that scares me about this, is this is exactly what Hitler did. And, you know, you are targeting those young children, and, man, you can actually really get a long way with that. It is nothing more, and correct me if you feel this terminology is too harsh, it is nothing more of a brainwashing of the younger generation to in turn go to mommy and daddy and be critical of mommy and daddy for their thoughts and their governmental stands, and the children with their dry eyes or their wet teary eyes making pleas to their mommy and daddy to change. It's a forced indoctrination of brainwashing. Oh, I, I, I completely and totally agree with that. And I think that, you know, as parents, you really need to pay attention to what's going on around and be teaching your children morals and values. And when you send your kids off to Head Start or other government programs, you just really need to be aware of what they're being taught. And even though my kids all attended public school and graduated from there, I... There's definitely an indoctrination going on for the youth of America, and I think you really do need to be careful as a parent. And I am proud to say that even though I am the parent of millennials, I have raised some very conservative pro-America children. Let me ask you. I'm I'm grateful for that. Let me ask you. I don't know. It does scare me. I don't think people really think about it the way that we think about it, and that's, that's exactly how this happens. It just happens. It just 
happens, Deb, and it's scary. Let me ask you a quick question. During the course of raising your children up to the point where you knew that they were going to be very, very treasured value to young adults, were there problems that they brought home from school or that were said to them that may have changed their lifestyle had it not been for devoting parents like yourself to sit down, reason with them, and tell them the truth? Yes. I can remember sitting around our dinner table and talking about politics with my kids. I can remember sitting around the table and talking to my kids actually even about gender identity, about homosexuality. And it's interesting because I actually have a brother who is gay. And so, you know, we ha- it's not that we don't have diversity in our family. We do. But I have a certain set of morals and standards that I believe in, and I have a certain standard of right and wrong. And, you know, I just, I want my kids, here's the thing is, I want my kids to be patient and tolerant and loving. I always want them to stand up for what they know what is right. You don't know, right there. Other people are entitled to their opinions, <clears throat> but you don't have to share that opinion. There, there you go. You know, you have said it so succinctly this morning. You have been so articulate. Nobody should be forced or coerced to bend from their morality or their values as a person just to accept another mode of lifestyle that you know in your heart is wrong. You can go ahead and love the person but hate the sin. You can hate the acts and still maintain your morality and your values. And that's what the left can't accept in this country today. They want us all to say, oh, we're sorry, we're going to change and go your way. And I will not do that. I agree with you 100%. They have no tolerance for us, and it's very, very interesting because I just feel like there's such a division right now, and I, it's amazing that you can just hate me personally because of my beliefs, and I'm allowing you to have yours. Yep. So, I don't know. It's a, we live in a crazy time, Zeb, a crazy time. But you know something? You have really made my day with your comments. God bless you and your family. Have a great Independence Day weekend, and please call me back in the future. I've enjoyed your call. Thank you so much, Zeb. You too. Thank you very much. What a nice lady. What a nice, articulate lady. She knows the score, let me tell you that. She knows what's going on. And if I were one of her children, I can guarantee you they were raised the right way. That's the way I feel. Congratulations to her. Don't forget Autumn Haven Assisted Living Center at 924 Christian Way in Rupert. Number to call, 436-3200. They make every effort to make sure that Autumn Haven is the best place for your loved one. Absolutely. And they invite you to come by and visit anytime. And right now with the summertime, they got a beautiful outdoor patio with all the barbecues and everything. And they urge people to come by and see. And they're so involved in the community, you know, going to the 4th of July, going to the Wilson Theater, all of this. They are the only locally owned and operated assisted living facility in the Minicasha area. They're small compared to some, but with a bigger heart than most. Autumn Haven Assisted Living Center in Rupert, 436-3200. Got time for another call. Give me a jingle on the landline, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Yeah, the one thing I will not do. And you can, out in radio land, get mad, stomp your feet. You can yell, scream, and holler at me on the air, whatever. I'm not going to change my values. I'm not going to change my thoughts of what is right and wrong, black and white, etc. Just to be coerced into a bigger herd of liberalism, I'm not going to do that. Not going to do it. So why even bother trying? You can go after me, you can go after my advertisers, you can go after anything you want to try to shut my my mouth and my mind and my thoughts up. But you're not going to get it done. Don't forget your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Oh, my goodness sakes, all seven locations. Yes, they've got the best in tires. Yes, they do the right thing because it matters. They really care about your safe driving. I don't care if you need new tires before you head out this weekend. I don't care if you've got to have the front end checked because it's kind of pulling one way or the other. I don't care if you need better brake service. They've got the best brake service of anywhere, anytime at all seven locations. 
with the best of highly trained technicians. They are good. Stop in today and see Lane and Rupert. Of course, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family and Paul, Daniel on Pole Line and Twin Falls, and Randy on Overland in Burley. The best. Your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. You stop in and see them today. Coming up next hour, the Chamber Report with Kyla over there at the Minicasha Chamber of Commerce. And then we've got a guest host on It's Time to Grow this morning, uh, Larry Zott, the Master Gardener Association President. 9.30 politics with Rita Ramsey. I always look forward to that. Then at 10.10 this morning, Cache County School Days, Roland Bott's going to be on the program. And at 10.32, Elk. Key Marilouch from Silver State Stampede in Nevada. Going to get ready now for the CBS News, and we'll be back in about seven minutes with more Zeb at the Ranch. Don't you dare go away. We'll see you in seven. Take care. Oh my goodness sakes, good morning and welcome back. Zeb at the ranch, oh my. I just, uh, Deanne and I just said goodbye to two wonderful people, Rick and Sandy, headed back to Colorado Springs. Drive safely. It's just been a blessing to have them visit with us the last couple of days, and I certainly hope they can come back out in the near future. We'd love to have them back here again. Wonderful people. Zeb at the ranch, I'm Zeb Bell with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. All All seven locations serving you and, of course, some of our great advertisers like Western Way Services. From the canyons of the Snake River and all across southern Idaho, we're always sure to show the Western Way Services. We care about our community, our resources, and this great land. Western Way Services is my Always at your disposal, and I don't care if you need dumpsters in the various sizes to clean out the basement, the garage, whatever. I don't care if you need porta potties for your party, they've got them all. Or perhaps you want to get on the route service. Every week they're there to pick up your garbage. Wave goodbye to your garbage, it's gone, it's out of there. Thanks to our friends that are loyal to the community and the people that they serve. Western Way Services, always at your disposal. Call them on the number 73469. Six, nine. And don't forget, too, as we ramble through this morning, the great, big, huge, festive Rupert Fourth of July. My, 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 they're going to have all kinds of fun over there for you. You like to sit and just listen to good music. Oh, my goodness, they're going to have excellent music. And, of course, on uh, tomorrow morning, they're going to have the Christmas in July breakfast starting at 6 o'clock. They're going to have on the 2nd that great, big, featuring members of the Idaho 25th Army Band, Patriot program, lawnmower races, mutton bust, and all kinds of fun at the Rupert Fourth of July, starting tomorrow and going through the fourth, of course, with their great big parade. Don't you miss it. Going to be great. And let's see what else. Oh, 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 by the way, you got to take care of your animals. And uh, by the way, I want to just issue a personal note, and I know Dr. Bill and Dr. Liz would agree with me that there's going to be a whole bunch of fireworks going off over the next couple of days, and your dogs and your kitty cats and your horses, everything, are going to get a little bit nervous. Make sure that they're in an area where they can be secure and confined and make sure everything's going to be okay. Ark Animal Hospital, 750 21st Street in Hayburn. Number to call, 678-1177. They do have the warm hearts for the cold noses. It's a mixed animal practice, meaning big or small, they love them all, and they'll take care of them. So be prepared and take care of your health of your animals. Ark Animal Hospital, super nice people, at 750 21st Street in Hayburn. That number to call, 678-1177. Good morning, Kyla, at the Chamber of Commerce. How are you this morning? Good morning, Zeb. How are you? We're great. We are so excited for all the stuff that is coming up on the calendar. It is going to be fantastic. We've been getting a ton of calls, and uh, we just want to wish everyone a very happy and safe Fourth of July, which seems crazy to be saying that, but I feel like this is Fourth of July week. I mean, Rupert is ready to go. 
You know, it's exciting because I can remember back when I was a wee young lad back in Wisconsin and 4th of July really meant something. Our family really got involved in being a part of the parades and the picnics and the family reunions, a lot of big things going on. Yes, a ton of big things. So I just want to remind everybody that if you want a complete list of every single activity that is happening in Rupert, and there are a lot, starting, like you said, with the Christmas in July breakfast from 6 to 10 a.m. tomorrow at Rupert Square, you can get on rupertforth.com. It's Rupert, spell it out, R-U-P-E-R-T, and then the number 4th.com. com. Click on the schedule, and they've got the complete listing. We also have it on the Minicaja Chamber website, minicajachamber.com. But um, we've just had a ton of calls. Of course, everybody wants to know what's going on. So literally every day there is something starting tomorrow, and I'm super excited about it. So whether you want to come down for breakfast, you know, the proceeds from that help with the Christmas lighting stuff that they do in November and all throughout December and it's just a fantastic group, and we really want to support them. And everybody needs breakfast, so you need to get down there. It's going to be fun. Absolutely. Now, real quick in the time remaining, Kyla, we talk about Rupert, their 4th of July festivities and everything. Is there any other item that you want to mention this morning? Sure. Real quickly, too, Burley, um, we have received some calls about that. They shoot off their fireworks on the 4th. At dark. Everybody asks, what time is the fireworks? And the best thing I can tell you for both Rupert and Burley is when it gets dark. That's, there you go. So um, so Burley will be on the 4th, and they do those over here on the Snake River. And then obviously Rupert is going to be Friday night, which is tomorrow. So I think that's going to be fantastic. And again, that will be at dark. So come on down to Rupert. Enjoy all the things they have going on in the square um, so much stuff going on in that town, whether you're going to go be in the, you know, the, are you going to do the 5K race or anything like that, Zeb? Uh, I'm not a 5K racer, but I have a question for you. When you watch yes. when you watch the fireworks, are you an ooer or an ah person? <laughs> I think I'm a both. I mean, I just get so excited about fireworks and I think their theme this year that they have is United We Stand. What a fantastic theme to celebrate the 4th of July. And you just got to give credit to all those folks on all the different committees for the Rupert 4th of July festivities. They work so hard all year. So it's time for us to kind of turn around and support them and go down and just enjoy it all. Soak it up. I agree. Now let's try it on the air. Let's pretend we're watching fireworks. The first one we'll do is the ooh. The second one is the ah. Are you ready? Here we go. One, two, three. Ooh. Now here's the ah. Ah. You've got it. You're ready for the fireworks. I am. I am. I'm ready to go soak it up, go enjoy all the different delicious types of food they have, just listen to the bands. I really want to check out the lawnmower races. And then, you know, don't forget on the 4th of July, too, Rupert, uh, sorry, not Rupert, but Burley is going to have, what is it, the richest little rodeo, I think, that they have going on. And that's going to be a lot of fun, too. So there is stuff all over the place. It's the richest one-day rodeo. That starts at 5 over in Burley and the Casual County Fairgrounds. And then, again, just so much. And then the Wilson Theater Shootout, that sounds exciting, and they're doing it three different times over this weekend. So all right. All well, sorts of stuff to check out. You've got a list there in front of you, and you're always so helpful. Over at the Minicasha Chamber of Commerce, Kyla, and how are the uh, 987 ways to get a hold of you? What's the best? I would say give us a call, 679-4793. Or get onto the website, uh, minicajachamber.com. You can always just uh, give us a call. That's the best way right now because things are busy. we got people all over in the visitor center, so just be sure to come on by. Kyla, thanks. God bless, and have a wonderful and very memorable Independence Day, 4th of July weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Same to you, Zeb. Take care. All right. Thank you much. Nice, nice lady right there at the Minicasha Chamber of Commerce. And by the way, I also want to remind you about our dear friends at Hanson Mortuary at 710 6th Street in Rupert. And Joel Hewitt and his staff are going to have a 4th of July Veterans Breakfast at Hanson Mortuary starting at 8.30 on the 4th before the parade starts. Bacon and cheese, potatoes and crepes. Oh, oh, oh it's going to be good eating time over there on the 4th at Hanson Mortuary. 
Inventory, 710 6th Street in Rupert. Number to call for more information, 436-5636. Joel Heward, family and staff, urging you to be careful, have fun, and enjoy a wonderful 4th of July weekend over in Rupert. Thank you so much. Right now, it's time to grow. I love this segment because I learn so much. And we have with us this morning, representing Tony McCammon of the University of Idaho Horticulture Department on It's Time to Grow, we have the Master Gardener President, and that's Larry Zott. Good morning, Larry. How are you? Uh, go ahead, sir. I just got him on. Well, okay. Good morning, Larry Zott. How are you this morning? Great, Zeb. How about yourself? I am fantastic. You know, before we get rolling here this morning, and I hope Tony left you all the particulars, I would really appreciate on this segment called It's Time to Grow if you would give us a list of the sponsors that need to be thanked for this segment. Go ahead, Larry. Absolutely. First of all, Southern Idaho Horticulture, and we have Magic Valley Master Gardener Association, the Minicasa Master Gardener Association, Monty's Plant Food and Humic Acid, and Sears and Burley. Very well done. Now, Larry, you are the Master Gardener Association president. What does that mean? I mean, uh, were you elected by the Republicans and the Democrats to fill that spot, or what happens here? That is that is correct, and I... Um, <laughs> I stacked the polls, so I want no. I'm kidding. What we did is we have a, you know we have elections, and the vice president of the association automatically moves up to the presidency the following year. That way, they have an opportunity to become familiar with what is going on, the inner workings of the association, and they're prepared to, again to take the take charge the following year. So last year I was elected as vice president, so this year I am now president. How many people, Larry, do you represent in the Master Gardening Program? And really, uh, you know, for those in the audience that don't understand what the Master Gardener Program is, could you give us a real quick synopsis of that? Most certainly. The Master Gardener Program, first of all, is consist- it consists of those individuals that um, truly find enjoyment or have a passion in gardening and there are just so many uh facets to gardening uh member our members some of them kind of specialize in let's say uh fruit trees and others are in vegetables some are in plants well that that is really their 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 passion their area of expertise but as a group our role is to help in the community help answer questions as far as uh issues people are having with particular uh, plants, trees, grass, whatever, and also to be a resource for the for the um, public as far as helping them get started with, for example, pollinator gardens or they're having problems with their vegetables. We are a resource that will help them identify you know, the causes and help them come up with solutions. Now, the Master Gardener Program, and Larry, I'm going to show a little bit of naivete here because I don't understand. Is it a nationwide program? Is it in every state? Is it through the various colleges and universities? Tell me a little bit about that. Sure. We in here in Idaho are associated with the University of Idaho. Now, it is a nationwide program. Each state has their own Master Gardener Association. As a matter of fact, in July... Um, I believe it's July 11, 12, 13th, in that time frame, there will be the National Convention for Master Gardeners uh, in Portland, Oregon. And at that um, event, which will be about a week long, there will be Master Gardeners from all over the country and all over the world coming in, again, to uh, learn and teach and, again, uh, create relationships that will help somewhere down the road. Now you, it was said to me, are an expert in pollinators and garden development for insect habitat. Woo! That's way above my pay grade, so explain to me what a pollinator is. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure about the word expert, but what a pollinator is, the pollinators are the ones that are, well, there are, <laughs> pollinators are actually any, <laughs> There's the, the top one is bees, obviously. Then we have butterflies, we have hummingbirds, we have even bats, moths, flies. They essentially take the pollen from one plant to another plant and pollinate them so that they will produce uh, flowers and seeds. And uh, I believe it's two out of every three bites of food that we take every day 
are directly related to pollinators pollinating the, the different types of plants. Really? I did not know that hummingbirds would fall into that subject. We got a whole bunch of hummingbirds out here. We got Arnold and we got Beauregard. We got a bunch of pet hummingbirds. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, again, pri- the, the primary, the number one uh, pollinator are the bees. Not only the, um, uh, hum- uh, the honeybees, which came over, actually they're not native, they came over with the, um, uh, back in the, I think it was 1600s, and they came over strictly for uh, their honey and for beeswax. Right. Now, you see, after World War II is when they really became a major force in pollinating the farms. I think that kind of coincides with after World War II, we became more of a, uh, uh, the smaller farms gave way to bigger farms. So now we wanted, uh, again, pollinators that could do the job. And hummingbirds have, uh, hummingbirds, I'm sorry, honeybees do have a range of about, Oh, two miles from the from their hive, they will fly and pollinate. So they are, they have, they cover a larger area than our native bees do, which are basically the solitary uh, bees that are most of them nest in the ground or nest in the uh, in wood um, pithy uh, stems, things like that. So um, the hummingbird, uh, the the honeybees are and the bees, our native bees, are the primary pollinators for all of our. Uh, uh, products, all, all of our plants. Okay, now I'm, like I said, I'm not an expert in anything like this, so I'm going to ask you some fairly uneducated questions. But I would imagine when it says here on my cheat sheet that you're an expert in pollinators, you, of course, will tell us the virtue of creating a better habitat for these pollinators so they get the job done and we all flourish with better crops and uh, flowers, etc., right? That is correct, yes, yes. The the challenge we face is that uh, pollinators, all pollinators, are in peril. And, what the, you know, the problem is that at least 185 species of pollinators are considered threatened or extinct by the World Conservation Union. And, um, you know, the I think it's the ex- Xer's uh, red list of endangered pollinators include 59 butterflies and moths and 57 bees. Wow. The, the challenge is that wild wildflowers and native habitats, uh, natural habitats, are being replaced by, you know, agricultural and urban dev- development, and less food available to the pollinators. Not only that, but we dump so much uh, pesticides on our lawns and whatever that uh, pollinators just don't have a ch- have a chance. We use pesticides, and, and what we don't realize, what most of us don't realize, is that pesticides are not selective. They, you know, they'll kill any insect. So while we may have aphids, for example, when we put something on it, it's going to kill anything that lands on there. So, you know, with these factors, pollinators are declining, and it's it's a, it's a danger. You know, we're we're concerned about that. That is a real problem. Well, Larry, okay, let me play devil's advocate with you. Isn't it a catch twenty two? And wheels over at the station. You got to ride the gain and cut down on the feedback. Uh, isn't it a catch twenty two that we don't want to sit outside and have a picnic and be just ate alive with mosquitoes and other bugs, etc. And so, therefore, we have the insect. So how do you relegate what's fair and honest to the good ones and the bad ones? The challenge is that again, uh, chemicals are really one of one of one option. Uh, along with our native habitat, we 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 look at using more native plants. And to some people, native plants they seem to think that means they need to let the grass grow long and wild and have brush piles all over. That's not true. Native plants, for example, are um, uh, common plants we see every day here, but they are native to our area, like the purple cone flower. We have the, um, oh my goodness, we have the black eyed Susan, we have the coreopsis, we have the blanket flower. So these are things that are native, and the more of those we plant, they attract beneficial insects, which actually feed on the, on, on the non beneficial insects. So it's, it's a situation of where over time they've evolved, the insects have evolved with them, so we can use native plants to help us control uh, those insects that we consider pests. You know, I'm sitting here and I'm trying to figure out how to phrase these questions so I act halfway intelligent, but how do you know as a novice gardener a good bug from a bad bug and who needs to die and who needs to live in your garden? How do you know? Well, the real challenge is why if we plant, if we have native plants, 
what we find is that even if there is a infestation, if we catch it early, we can either you know remove the leaf, even take the plant out, and that's all we need to do. We don't have to go out there and uh, soak every single plant in any type of, uh, of pesticide. We, if we monitor what's going on in our yard, uh, we can keep it at a minimum. And, again, that's part of the natural evolution. There are going to be negative beneficials. There are going to be non-beneficials. But if we, lit, we don't try to uh, manage nature, nature will take care of itself. Our plants have evolved. Native plants have evolved over time. The insects have evolved with them over time. And there is the, the balance there. One will take care of the other if we just let it go. Now, like I say, if you have a problem with some plants, it's easy just if we monitor them often. We can pull leaves off. We can cut leaves off. We can get rid of the plant, but not. we don't have to do pesticides on everything. Larry, are there books available or people like yourself available to speak to different people or they can educate themselves online or find out about the good bugs, the bad bugs, and what to do to help the pollinators? I mean, where do they get all this information? Absolutely. There are just, uh, there's, uh, so many sources out there, in addition to just searching the Internet. But as far as people in our listening area, they, we have a great resource you know, with the Master Gardener program through the University of Idaho. And uh, the extension offices are there to help people uh, identify problems, solve problems, and the Master Gardeners become an extension of our uh, horticulturists because they can only handle so much. So we have been gone, we've gone through classes and learned a lot of these things. That doesn't make us experts, but we can certainly help uh, individual homeowners or even speak to organizations, all they have to do is contact the local extension office and arrange for someone to come out and talk to them or, again, come out and look at the issues and help them identify it and solve the problem. Absolutely. Man, you are interesting. you got to promise me you'll come back. Maybe you can tie old Tony up at his desk and grab the phone and come on again in the future time. Would that work for you? Thank you. All right. Hey, listen, before you go, Larry, give us a rundown on the sponsors of It's Time to Grow one more time. Most of them are our sponsors, and they are Southern Idaho Horticulture. You can check us out on Facebook. There's Magic Valley Master Gardener Association, the Minicasa Master Gardener Association, Monty's Plant Food and Humic Acid, and Sears and Burley. Well, now, we have a caller with a quick question, and I've only got a minute left. So, Larry, stay on the line. I'll have the uh, caller make the question. Go ahead. Quickly, caller. I've only got about 30 seconds. You know, when it comes to endangered species, uh, some of this stuff that we're supposed to be worried about is just hardly even an issue. But when it comes to pollinators, it's vital. It's critical. It's, it's something we never hear about from the environmentalists. And this may be the most important endangered species that I know of, whether or not it's the bees or whatever it is. And see, this is what we need to know about, not what we hear from these extreme environmentalists. I'll hang up. All right. Appreciate your call. Larry, a quick response. Go ahead, quickly. Absolutely. There's an old saying that the bees say, if they go, they're going to take us with them, meaning that the pollinators are critical to our continued existence here on this planet, and we take it for granted. As we keep growing things and taking more space, we're, we're destroying their habitat, we're, we're killing them with pesticides, and we need to take a hard look at what we're doing, how we're doing, and realize that we need to work with them, not against them. Larry Zott is the Master Gardener Association president. Did a super job. Larry, God bless you, man. Have a great Independence Day weekend. Thank you for being on the program. Thanks, Zab. You have a great one also. All right. Thank, thank, you, thank you very much. Nice man. Very nice man on the program segment called It's Time to Grow. Appreciate that very much. Oh, my, it's time to pay some bills. I have to do that. Don't forget our dear friends over at Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert. All about your life insurance, health insurance, retirement planning, employee benefits. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They are really accessible and devoted to helping and serving you. All you need to do is make an appointment. Call them at 436 442 that number again, 436-4424. Cameron and Siemens Insurance, wishing you and your family a very safe and sane 
Independence Day weekend. Also, I know some other folks that are saying, hey, you want to have some fun on the 4th of July weekend? Oh, buddy, you better get in today to Let's Ride. 270 Highway 24 between Rupert and the world. This is where the fun is sold. Oh, boy. They're open Monday through Friday, 9 to 6, Saturdays, 9 to 4. All the watercraft get out on the lakes and the river. Boom, 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 and you're going to have a good time. And all the four-wheelers and the side-by-sides. Oh, yeah, baby, I'm telling you, they got it all right there at Let's Ride. And all the accessories, all the clothing, and a super service department to keep you running all at Let's Ride. 270 Highway 24 between Rupert and the World, where the fun is sold. Really, really good folks. I want to get in one other quick uh, notice here before we go too much further. And uh, Rita's on the line with us, and we'll get right to her. I want to remind you about some of the great merchants involved in the Rupert Fourth of July celebration, including Dixon Oil at 602 South 2nd and Rupert, number to call 436-6609. Daryl and the crew at Dixon Oil wish you and your family a very safe, sane Independence Day weekend. Have the best Fourth of July ever. Stop in for your gas, your oils, all of it at Dixon Oil in Rupert. And all also, Mad River Laser at 502 East Street in Rupert. Lovely Nicole and the whole family serving you. And it's going to be Christmas in July at Mad River Laser. They've got their entire Christmas line out, and you can really save money on this great big Christmas in July sale at Mad River Laser, 502 East Street in Rupert. They both welcome you to the 4th of July festivities in Rupert. Right now, whew, i got to hurry. Good morning. Good morning, Rita Ramsey. How are you? Good morning. I'm real good, thank you. Are you ready for the Independence Day weekend? Sure. Do you make the homemade ice cream and have all the family over for a picnic? What do you do? Actually, our both of our daughters and their husbands and families live up in Rexburg, and they have a big Fourth of July parade, so... My oldest grandson and my oldest granddaughter are in the parade with their band groups this year. And so we go up there and watch the parade and then have a barbecue after and then come home before dark. I got to ask you, Rita, when we get into the political side of things this morning, honestly, have you ever seen such a self-made mess as CNN has done to themselves? They are in so much hot water. They are in so much tumultuous turmoil. I wouldn't be a bit surprised if they fired the whole doggone mess. Well, they really ought to. This is one of those things that uh, somebody's finally getting their due and just reward. Kind of like, you know, when your mom said, now, if you do that, you know, you're going to have some consequences to pay. Well, here they are. And finally, it's been a long time because nobody's ever held CNN for accountability. They've just been able to do what they wanted. In the last several years, it's just been so out of control that that it's pathetic. And so finally, for some of this to come to roost is kind of like, you know what? This is good. You know, I read some of the absolute failings of this network earlier this morning and the low-class atmosphere of some of their reporters, including, and this one still makes no sense to me whatsoever, what Reza Aslan had done on June 3rd when she ate a portion of a human brain on live television. What are these kooks doing over there? They are starving for attention, and they think they have to do something stupid like that to get it. When, in a sense, if they would just report the news, not put their slant on it, just report it, they would probably have so much more attention that they wouldn't even know what to do. But they've been in a climate of uh, you have to create news in order to get attention. And so it's like, well, whoever can do the most stupid stuff, uh, that's who's going to get attention. You know, when you talk about stupid stuff, it's funny how I segued right to Elizabeth Warren, Chuck Schumer, Bernie Sanders, Hillary, and the rest. Uh, It's unbelievable to me how a party could rely or tend to rely on their so-called mental ability to lead the party after they've been proven losers. Their concepts and their uh, future statements are such that don't fit into the American public and what they want. When are the Democrats going to wise up and say, hmm, maybe we better develop a platform? 
Well, it's just it's just crazy. Ah. There's no rhyme or reason to what they do and why they do it, and it's it's ridiculous because we've been accepting it and not holding them to a higher standard. Anybody who who pays attention to to what they're doing and and uh, will take and give them any kind of uh, credibility is just just crazy. We have a caller with a question. Caller, quickly, you're on the air. Go ahead, state your question. Well, I just want to make a comment about your Independence Day. You know, we've we've forgotten our heritage, and so now it's firecrackers and picnics, and we've forgotten the Founding Fathers um, as far as their sacrifice that we might be able to still have uh, celebrations and so forth. But everybody uses Fourth of July. Fourth of July is just another day. Independence Day means something special, but, of course, uh, I'd like to read it, a comment about that because we, we're we not being taught anything or very little in our schools. Even when I was going to school, and Deb, you and I are just basically a little bit younger than Methuselah. So um, <laughs> I'd like her to comment about that. All right. Uh, a comment I'd like to make real quick is that the globalists want a one-world government, and so they have gotten all these liberals lined up to promote their one world government scheme uh, the, and under the United Nations. So we need to get out of the United Nations, H.R. 193, and I'd like to read it and comment about that. All right, sir, and have a very blessed have a Independence Day weekend. Independence Day weekend, thank you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that very much. Rita, I'll let you follow up on that call. Okay, I want to do, uh, actually, I brought some material I wanted to share with you about the signers of the Declaration of Independence. <clears throat> but I wanted to also mention about um, uh, Ambassador Nikki Haley, and the, the liberals are just having an absolute meltdown over her tweet. And um, her tweet said, just five months into our time here, we've cut over a half a billion dollars from the U.N., peacekeeping budget and we're only getting started and then she tweeted a picture with herself smiling and the liberals are just going absolutely <laughs> out of this world i mean they are just off on another when it's like oh my gosh blah, 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 you know and um, i think they're making some progress with that and somebody like her that's in there that has a little bit of conservative blood in her veins can maybe make uh, make a difference with this, and so it looks like that um, they're kind of trying to see if they can't uh, cut down on us paying quite so much, which will will help in maybe withdrawing from that. I don't know whether we'll get withdrawn totally, but you know, if they just took the money that they paid into the UN and paid individual, you know, there's lots and lots of churches around the world that try to help these people that supposedly the UN is is helping, you know, the people in Africa and, and that type of thing, when in a sense, really, all they're doing is uh, bowing to their, let's let's have the God of, uh, uh, of global warming, and, and we'll, we'll honor that, and that's where all their money's going to. And so I think that with somebody like Nikki Haley in there, she can maybe help make a difference in the way that this uh, ends up. Absolutely. Now, I want to say this this morning. I mentioned it in the first hour, and I'm going to stand behind my statement. You take away the CNNs, take away the garbage and the fake news, take away the perpetration of stories that have been absolutely lies and falsehoods, like with Steve Scaramucci with the lie that he met with the certain Russian ambassadors and everything else, and then when he called him out on the table, he wasn't even anywhere close to these Russians. He is threatening CNN with a $100 million lawsuit, and they're backing up fast and apologizing. But what I'm getting at is... Trump is making good on his campaign promises with the crackdown on the illegal aliens, the crackdown on sanctuary cities, and, of course, getting the implementation starting tonight with the 90-day ban on the uh, Muslim countries of people trying to come in here as refugees. Rita, I'll tell you what, I am very happy with what's going on. Well, I am, too, and I'm glad to finally see that somebody is doing something and. I think that, uh, you know, Trump made a lot of campaign promises, and actually he's smart enough to say, you know, these are some things that I promised we need to go through with him. I hope that uh, he doesn't get, uh, you know, stopped in his tracks, but at least he's trying, and there's some of this stuff that is actually, um, 
you know, going to, to make a difference. I, um, I think that it's quite interesting that, you know, everybody wants to fight Trump and they're doing all that they can. I, I saw an article this morning on the news that um, there were a bunch of Trump supporters that kind of lashed back at the Starburst, or Starbucks staffers who mocked a woman in a Trump T-shirt, and this was over in North Carolina. More than 50 people, all wearing clothes or carrying items that signified their support for President Trump, piled into a Starbucks in Charlotte, North Carolina. This was last Saturday after the coffee shop staff was accused of mocking a customer for wearing a Trump T-shirt. The peaceful sit-in, which began at 2 p.m., completely filled the Starbucks location and even the parking lot for a little while. The group had no demands, but instead wanted to stand up to a business they felt was disrespectful towards their political views. We wanted the staff to see that Trump supporters are just as human as anyone else, they said. And it got to be, it was going to be a little bit tense in there. And they said it's unacceptable in a modern society to make a customer feel uncomfortable, whether it's a liberal business mistreating a conservative customer a conservative business mistreating a liberal so members of that group started their sit-in started out a little tense but the mood shifted when people started ordering beverages and using names associated with the white house like president pence and attorney general jeff sessions i gave them the name trump and they were gracious about it said shelly anderson we just wanted to reverse the little neck of the little ne- negativity it's really good to come together and take something negative and just come in here and be respectful the reason that i wanted to mention this is this is so totally different than the democrats i mean you look at all the damage the black lives and all that other group and all those people that gather together and protest and here you've got some people who actually had a right to to protest and they could have got a little negative and had signs and stuff if they wanted but instead they just went in there and were really respectful and ordered coffee and just let their point be known and Took off and left Absolutely. Absolutely. Rita, I wanted to ask you a question, and I don't mean to put you on the spot with this question, but I have already said earlier this morning my opinion on this. I look at the illegal aliens and the crackdown on our borders. I look at our sanctuary cities, which I found to be demons against our Constitution, and mayors that uh, that support these sanctuary cities that should be replaced. And I ask you this. I think anybody that supports the illegality that's going on in our society with illegals coming in and getting and reaping benefits from our government and our welfare system and the sanctuary cities, anybody that supports that, I think, should be having a name of traitor added onto their back name because it's against our society and our constitution well they ought to and really what ought to happen is it ought to be brought out in the communities where they're at and and let it be an election issue it needs to be brought out and posted up on big posters and bulletin boards and everything else the thing of it is that what's going to happen is I I read an article this morning that said Swedish National Police Commissioner Dan Ellison has begged the government for help as a number of no-go zones has has risen from 55 to 61 in only one year. He said, help us, help us, we're we're in trouble. Um, He said that there were at least 5,000 criminals divided into around 200 networks in Sweden operating in the now 61 no-go zones, which are heavily migrant populated. And and what this tells you is that those people who were here illegally and wanting to do bad stuff, and I don't doubt that there are some people that are good, but I I agree with those who say, you know, we really need to have safe zones in the countries that they live in, protect them there and let them stay in their own countries, because they don't really want to go. And if you were to look at who the who the migrants are that are coming. It's not families with little kids that are fleeing oppression from their government. These are people who are probably, well, the majority of them are between ages 18 and 35, and they're men, and they're coming here to harm us. They're going to the other countries so that they can get a foothold in those countries, 
and harm those people in those countries. It isn't so that they can just get a job and live their life. I agree. Rita, stand by just for a moment. I've got to get a weather forecast on here. And the weather this hour brought to you by Phillips, Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company. CPAs providing accounting services to the Minicasha area for well over 50 years. The best of tax return preparation, tax planning, bookkeeping services, business consulting, retirement planning, a list goes on and on of the services they can do to help you and provide you uh, perhaps for a better business and more money in your pocket. They've got two locations in Burley and Rupert. Don't forget Phillips, Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company. CPA serving you for over 50 years. Here's the weather forecast. I'll be right back. Today and tomorrow, fairly mild as we get into Saturday and Sunday. Temperature rising up into the 90s. Here's your weather forecast for Zebeth Ranch. Lots of sunshine for today, a little on the breezy side. Winds out of the west, 10 to 20 miles an hour. That wind is not helping the wildfire suppression as we experience about five different wildfires going on in our area. So if you're wondering where all of the smoke is coming from and it's affecting your breathing, be aware that there's lots of fires going on. Sunny skies for today, high of 78. Tonight, clear skies, low 48. Tomorrow, sunny and 83. Looks like sunny and 90 for Saturday, close to 95 for Sunday. That's your weather for Zebra. Thank you, Gina. Brought to everybody this hour by Phillips Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company. CPAs, the very best at 1710 Overland Avenue in Burley and 620 5th Street in Rupert. They can help you. They will help you. Call them today. Phillips Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company. Rita, you know, there's so much going on in the news today. And there's so much that we need to worry about. And health care is taking up a lot of the time of our congressmen and our senators right now. And this morning there seemed to be a little bit of a breakthrough with people like Rand Paul and others because there may be two plans put together instead of one which would make the revamp of the health care system more palatable to some of the Republicans. What are your thoughts about the health care issue? I still feel like they're just being idiots about it. They need to make sure that there's a safety net for people who need it or want it and let the rest of us do our own thing, the free market. That's the only way that it's going to work. That's the only way we're going to reduce costs. That's the only way that we'll step up productivity. And that type of thing is if it is just left alone, keep the government out of it, don't... uh, don't tell us what we have to do. Just tell us what's available, and if we want, if we want to participate in it, we can. And those people who then can't get health insurance because of pre-existing um, things or, or the cost or whatever, they have an alternative route to go with. But for the government to be involved in it at all is absolutely wrong. It's ridiculous, and it's not going to work. So I think they're just totally wasting their time. They want to be in charge, and it doesn't matter whether it's Republicans or Democrats. They just want to be in charge of us, and they want to be in charge of the economy, and that's why they're doing it. You know, I agree with you. I do totally with what you just said, but I also want to throw this into the fray. Uh, I stuck my neck out on the line here about a year ago when I was talking to Representative Fred Wood and Scott Bedke and others, and I said, hey, you know what? There's a complaint about cutting back on Medicaid. Well, there should be a cutback on Medicaid, and let me explain why. We have a lot of people on Medicaid that are deadbeats to the system, and I maintain, Rita, that there should be a case-by-case study of those that are able-bodied and ready to support themselves and can support themselves, and the elimination from the freebies and make them responsible for a lot of their own health care costs. Your thoughts, am I wrong? No, that's absolutely right. And it, Medicaid is just the tip of the iceberg as far as making sure that people that are on those um, draining paths should be on. There, there's numbers of others of them, and they're on there, and they shouldn't be. They should be out working on their own or taking care of themselves or or doing what they can. We have incentives to make people not work, and and that's where it comes in. You just start offering up all of it. We're offering all of those benefits to people who aren't even citizens of our country. That's right. And we're giving them all the free stuff because you can't ask them, are you a citizen or not? And so we just offer it up to them and give it to them, and, and a lot of them are stuck on it for life. Like the refugees, once they get on it, they, they get it for life if they will get citizenship within five years. 
They get all the free stuff for life. That's way better than you and I, and we've been around for 60 years working and paying taxes for the last 40 or so, and um, it's just ridiculous. But until you have somebody who will go in and say, you know what, the states individually need to take care of this, they need to do it on their own, and you need to go through and sift and make sure that you don't have people on here that shouldn't be on here, and especially the deadbeats, and, and quit giving all the free stuff and make people say, you know, I guess if I'm going to get something, I'm going to have to go out there and, and work and, and get it myself. You know, and you mentioned it yourself also just a moment ago, that they need to have a case-by-case study, and I'll maintain and go toe-to-toe with anybody on this, that it will be cost-effective, not ineffective, to do a study-by-case basis and weed out the chaff and let those people know they're not longer, no longer going to be deadbeats on our system. Oh, absolutely. And until the government says, okay, we don't want to be in charge of you anymore, it's going to just keep getting worse and worse, and then we have collapse. But it has got to be assisting and getting getting it slimmed down to where only the people who are really in need are, are the ones who are on that system. Absolutely. We have a caller with a question. Quickly, caller, I'm on the air. Go ahead. You bet. Uh, one question is, healthcare deal they have to, they don't have to buy it but who takes care of them when they neglect to take care of themselves does that fall back on me i mean if you don't have personal responsibility then you need to account for your actions when you get older so go ahead rita i'll let you express your opinions about the caller and then i'll jump in go ahead well actually when people don't buy insurance and it does end up landing back into the counties if they can't pay for it themselves. Mm-hmm. However, the counties can go in and uh, put uh, uh, liens against any former or any later tax returns and that type of thing, and and against any personal property that they have because they're indigents and the county has to pay for it. So you and I, the taxpayers, are the ones who have to pay for it. And, and the part that, that I think that is, is well worth it is if people feel like that they can't afford insurance, then they need to go to the, to the government and say, you know, we can't really afford it. Um, we would like to have a, a uh, uh, you know, one where uh, all of a sudden I lost my, what I was going to say about, you know, the people who are, who have these big, huge, huge bills and can't pay for it, if they have catastrophe insurance that would pay for the really big stuff, and that could be bought through the state if they can't get it anyplace else, but it just, it, it makes it responsible if they would have to pay for their stuff. If you go to the doctor and build up bills, you're responsible for it. I mean, that's the way it used to be. It always worked. There were a lot of people who didn't have insurance, but they knew that if they had something come up, they were going to have to pay for it. We just live in a society where there's no personal responsibility anymore, and it's just out of control. Well, I think that it needs to go, and I've only got about a minute and a half left, it needs to go back to where it's even taught in the schools, self-reliance and self-responsibility. You have to be accountable for your own life and your actions. Quick response, and then I'll take the call. No, that's absolutely right. But, you know, we live in a society where there's no personal responsibility anymore. I agree. It's going to be our downfall. Caller, I've only got a minute. I'm going to cut you off if you go too long. Real fast, go. I'm kind of confused by some of the comments because they're double-sided. You can't have a society that expects individual responsibility and then have a safety net for the people that don't. That's conflicting. Explain that to me, please. Go ahead, Rita, and then I'll follow in. Go ahead real fast. The safety net that I'm talking about is that if you can't buy insurance because you have had cancer or whatever, that the the government can help you to get a policy and help you buy a policy. That's been the big thing is that they, you know, if you've had cancer, you can't get it through Blue Shield or, or any of these others. And the safety net I'm talking about is you go to the government and say, help me to get a policy and I will pay for it. So it, it is personal responsibility, but that safety net is if you can't get it from any from any of the individual 
insurance people. I am flat out of time. Got to run to another segment, but Rita Ramsey, I extend to you and your family and everybody at your business a very happy, safe, and blessed Independence Day weekend. Thank you for being on the program. Okay, thanks. Bye. All righty. Bye-bye. Rita Ramsey, I always look forward to having her on the program every Thursday. Right now. Right now, it's mid-morning, and I'm starving to death. I really am. I'm hungry. I know some great places to go. How about the AC Drive-In at 601 East Main Street in Burley? Orange and lemonade freezes. Ooh, they're so good for the hot weather. Maybe mix it up with a chicken fried steak sandwich or a famous Farmer Brown Burger and the fries and the special sauce. Oh boy. AC Drive-In, 601 East Main in Burley. Let's move on over to Taco Bandito. They've got uh, their location at uh, 2301 Overland in Burley, and they got the street tacos, the shell, the choice of meat, either steak, pork, or fire-roasted salsa chicken. Choice of cheese, taco sauce. Oh, and a special pico de gio salsa. (laughs) Knock your socks off. Delicious. And of course, the breakfast burritos, all of this and more at Taco Bandito 2301 Overland in Burley. Moving over now to Burgers Etc. 124 South Oneida and Rupert and 700 Overland in Burley. Root beer floats only 99 cents after 3 p.m. in the afternoon. I'll take five. Anyway, I'll tell you what, fresh strawberry shakes, delicious burgers, and every Sunday at the Burley location, shrimp dinner for only $5.99 at Burgers Etc. in Rupert and Burley. Well, let's move over now to Stevo's. Mm-mm. Stevo's located at 290 South, 600 West of Hayburn. The famous patio is open, and they've got music every Friday and Saturday night. Enjoy the food, enjoy the people, enjoy the music. Wow! At Stevo's, and they got a new salad called the Chaos Salad, chicken breast with bacon, pickles, jalapeno peppers. It's delicious. You're going to love all the food at Stevo's in Hayburn. And last but not least, let's talk about Doc's Pizza. 514 6th Street in Rupert. And they've been voted again the best pizza in the Minicash area for 2017. Oh, my goodness, all the pizza, all the subs, all the soups, all the salads, all the nice people. You're going to love Doc's Pizza. Everybody does at 514 6th Street in Rupert. And those are just a few great places to go when you're hungry and starving to death. (laughs) Ho, ho. Am I ever? We're going to take a little break and come back with Cache County School Days and then our business salute and then Elkie Merrilluch down in Elko, Nevada. Don't go away, Zeb at the Ranch. I'll be back in about seven minutes. Morning, morning, morning. Hope you're having a wonderful Thursday, June 29th, and it is beautiful outside. Enjoy as we kind of creep on up to Independence Day weekend. Thank you so much. Zeb at the Ranch, I'm Zeb Bell with the frog in his throat. <clears throat> Excuse me, get back in the swamp. And uh, brought to you by our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you, along with some of our great advertisers. Like Western Way Services, always at your disposal. Call them at 734-6969. Wheels, right now I'd like you to play a good word for our friends at the Silver State Stampede. Nevada's oldest rodeo. The Silver State Stampede roars into Elko July 13th, 14th, and 15th for family entertainment at its best. This PRCA rodeo brings you the thrill of professional riders going head-to-head in one of the world's toughest sports, rodeo. The action kicks off Thursday with the annual kickoff party featuring mutton busting, Old West Bronc riding, tri-tip dinner for just 10 bucks, and an extra dose of the world-famous Ring of Fear. Head into Friday and Saturday for PRCA Rodeo Action with the award-winning Wild Child Rodeo Clown and Dance the Night Away with the Jeff Palmer Band. So gather your friends and get your tickets today for the 2017 Silver State Stampede, July 13th through the 15th. And don't forget to wear your pink for Tough Enough to Wear Pink Night on Saturday. Family entertainment at its best with the 2017 Silver State Stampede at the Elko County Fairgrounds. You'll pay for the whole seat, but you'll only need the egg. There you go. Thank you much. We'll be talking to Elkie Merrilluch down there in about another half hour.
Hey, don't forget we got some birthdays coming up this weekend, Independence Day weekend, and we want to say happy birthday Saturday to Donna Mass. Donna is going to have her birthday on July 1st. And then Kathy Benson. Kathy Benson, Kent's wife, is going to have her birthday on July 3rd. And on the 4th of July, happy birthday to my son, Jake. Yep, Jake was born as a firecracker baby on the 4th of July. Happy birthday to him. Don't forget some of the great activity that's going on over at the Rupert 4th of July celebration and the merchants that wish you to come on over, including Rupert Animal Clinic at 200 South Highway 24 in Rupert. They are a full-service facility servicing large and small animals, featuring a surgical cutting laser causing less pain, swelling, and quicker healing. These folks really know they really care. Now's the time to be sure and protect your horses, too, from that West Nile virus. Make sure your vaccinations are up to date. Rupert Animal Clinic in Rupert, 436-9818. And Senator Kelly Anthon, what a dear friend to this program, and he urges everybody to come on over to Rupert for the 4th of July celebration and celebrate all the fun, the great food, the music, the mutton busting, the great big patriotic music, everything in Rupert. Thank you, Senator Kelly Anthon inviting you all to have a good Independence Day weekend in Rupert. Along with Haruza Insurance, 723 South 3rd Street in Rupert, you know they really care. And they can quote your commercial and business and auto and home and life and health insurance. And they offer the best combination of competitive rates, coverage, and personal service. Get a hold of them today, 436-4420. Arusa Insurance in Rupert. And all of these great folks welcome you to come on over to the 4th of July activities in Rupert. Right now it's time for Cache County School Days. And Cache County School Days brought to you by two wonderful businesses. First of all, A Child's World at 1308 Overland and Burley for all the baby clothing and the birthday presents and the games, the puzzles and of course all the furniture for the babies, the cribs, the changers, the car seats, everything at A Child's World. 1308 Overland in Burley and along with Ambulatory Surgery Center at 1344 Highland Avenue in Burley for your outpatient surgeries to save you money. On Glock coma surgeries, colonoscopies, etc. You call them today and find out more. 677-8888. Ambulatory Surgery Center and Child's World bringing you school days in Cassia County. And right now, we have the Declo High School principal, and that's Roland Bott. Good morning, sir. How are you? I am great. How are you this morning? Not too bad. You know, you represent a high school over in Declo that I'm telling you, a lot of people across the United States, a lot of superintendents, a lot of principals, they would absolutely lay their lives on the railroad track to have the great leadership that you have over there in Declo and an outstanding athletic program. Go ahead and talk to us about that. Well, we have a wonderful group of teachers that work with our students. And we have the best students uh, that I have, I have met anywhere, which make it a pleasure to be involved in education. Well, it's not as simple as that, though. I mean, you folks have really worked hard to get from the elementary grades all the way through the high school a really sound program. Tell us a little bit more about it and be a, a lot more inclusive of the information. Okay. Well, it starts actually, you started it out well. It starts with an elementary program where... Um, Mr. Lloyd and his teachers do a great job getting our kids started. Uh, my own children have been involved in that uh, in our elementary, and that's followed up by uh, Mr. Muir and the staff at junior high that have our students ready for us when they get to high school. And, uh, so when they get to us, they're ready to go to work. And, and they do just that. They come, and our teachers work with them, and our students do very well uh, on the SAT, ACT, and, and getting ready for college and going on, and our coaches do a great job of working with our kids in all of our athletic programs, and that's been shown by uh, multiple district and state appearances and uh, multiple state academic championships. 
Now, I understand that, and I'm going to ask you, Roland, to please don't move with that cell phone. I think you're calling from outside. The wind conditions or whatever just stand perfectly still. But I understand that you have been recognized as a school of excellence by the State Athletic Association. What kind of parameters did they judge from to give you that school of excellence? School of excellence is judged based on academics, uh, student participation in all activities, from speech, band, drama, cheer, dance, and your traditional athletic events, um, and sportsmanship, and spirit squads at, at activities, uh, and citizenship. You know, I'm really impressed with what you've done over there, and I understand this is not the first time that you've won this award. Talk about that, please. Uh, this is actually the seventh year uh, that DECLO has been recognized in the 2A School of Excellence for the state of Idaho. And that is, in, I think that's an, a wonderful honor. And of all the awards that our school receives, this one's probably my favorite because it recognizes all of our kids, not just the kids that uh, might do well on the football field or the basketball floor, but it recognizes our, our good students, our fans our students who come to support the kids at their activities. It's a school recognition, and I I think it's a great representation of our school. You know, Roland, I want to ask you something that it is an irritant to me, and I'll tell you why, because I believe in a well-rounded program. I believe in an athletic program in school. I believe that you can have excellent athletics and you can also excel in the classroom. But there are those that are the naysayers in our society, and they want to turn things over to where, no, get rid of all the extracurricular. You don't need that. Just like over in Japan, keep the kids in the classroom classroom and keep their nose to the grindstone. What are your thoughts about some of these concepts of taking away the extracurricular? I think that would be a terrible mistake. Uh, there's a lot of research that shows that students that are involved in extra, extracurricular activities, it doesn't have to just be football or, or basketball, drama or speech. Those students consistently do better academically as well and, and, are, more, and are successful. You know, how do you gauge as a principal or a school system uh, how much is too much and when to back off or how to make sure that you're not exceeding in one area and diminishing in another? How do you know? I guess the, our best or only way really to judge that is, is uh, academic performance. Are they doing well in the classroom? Are they staying current and caught up on their grades and homework? And, of course, we rely heavily on our parents. We have a very supportive group of parents in our community that uh, have been in very involved in education themselves, and they support us very well. And uh, I think that's where we have to watch and look. You know, you're really proud of everything that you do over there, and I've talked to a lot of the student-athletes that have attended the high school, and the pride that's over in your area, I mean, that's a five-letter word that is doggone hard to achieve, and once you get it, you don't want to lose it. There's a lot of pride in going to the Declo school system, isn't there? There is. Uh, One of my favorite phone calls that occurs quite often in the summer, people move into the community and they call and ask how to... How do we find a place to live in Deckel? That's where we want our kids to go to school. And uh, that, that says a lot about our school and our community, but that's where people want to be. You know, when you look at the inner city problems, Roland, and uh, athletics in school, and the kids don't want to go to school, they uh, they only think about the minute that bell rings to get the heck out of Dodge City and leave, uh, and then you have a school system like yours out here in Idaho, where you've got so much going on, so much involvement, and the kids are really taking a hold of uh, learning about life experiences. If you were to transplant yourself into an inner city situation, New York, Pittsburgh, whatever. How would you change things to change the attitude? Well, that's a that's a loaded question. Um, I, I think the first thing you, that we have to do, or I guess I would do, is uh, get to know the students and and get their trust. But they've got to have the opportunity to become involved themselves and believe in what they're doing. Uh, our kids believe. Um, and that's come from lots of years of 
of success long before I arrived on the scene. Uh, teaching these kids that they can they can do anything they put their minds to and be successful. I'd take it one step further, and I would throw this into the fray. Almost 95% would depend on the parental involvement and the parental responsibility. Would you agree with that? 100%. We're only going to go as far as the parents help us get. And uh, and our parents are, are very involved and very supportive, and we're very grateful for that. Absolutely. Well, I want to extend to you another great big uh, way to go as far as winning this School of Excellence by the State Athletic Association. Now I understand for seven years in a row. And uh, it says a lot about the leadership of the school. It says a lot about the leadership from you and the fine families over there. And Roland, I appreciate you coming on the program and telling us about it this morning. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. All right, sir. Have a great Independence Day weekend. Thank you. All right, sir. Mr. Roland Bott, Declo High School principal, and, man, they've got things going over there. I mean, I've heard a lot of good things about the attitude and the student body and the teachers and the parents. I mean, when you win an award like that seven years in a row, that says a lot. Congratulations to them. And, of course, School Days in Cache County brought to you by two great businesses, A Child's World at 1308 Overland and Burley, and, of course, Ambulatory Surgery Center at 1344 Highland Avenue. The number to call, 677-8888. Thank you very much. Uh, Before we go to our business salute, I also want to remind you about uh, the Rupert Fourth of July Committee. You know, this will be my last time uh, this morning to brag about all the things that are going on over there. And they're going to start in the morning, as a matter of fact, over in Rupert with that great big Christmas in July breakfast. It's going to be at the city park tomorrow morning. And it's going to start at 6 o'clock, and they're going to have all kinds of great, great delicious food. And then every day, something more added into the fray of fun over in Rupert. I mean, we're talking about the mutton-busting competition out on the fairgrounds, and we're talking about the patriotic program at the city park with the Idaho 25th Army Band. We're talking about lawnmower races. We're talking about the Firecracker 5K and 10K. I mean, the list goes on and on. And then on third, or I should say next week on the Fourth of July, that huge, always well known, always respected Fourth of July parade. They've got a lot going on over at the Rupert Fourth of July committee. Fun for you and the whole family. You get on over there. Uh, let's see what else have I got here, real quick. Um, oh, a reminder. I need to get this reminder in. I am not going to be on the air. Monday morning. I am not going to be on my program Monday morning nor on Tuesday. My wife and I are going to spend for the first time in 45 years a 4th of July weekend just to ourselves. And we haven't done this for a long, long time and uh, ever. And so we're going to take a couple of days extra off. We're going to be gone Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Monday is going to be an off day. Sharon is going to run the program for us from the studio at K-Bar on Monday. Her and Wheels are going to really have a great patriotic program. And then on Tuesday of next week, which is the 4th of July, naturally, I will be still gone, and we will talk to you again on Wednesday of next week. So I'm going to take a couple days off. Do I feel embarrassed about it? No! I'm looking forward to it. So along with my family, to your family, we hope you have a lot of fun, safe fun, on Independence Day weekend. Okay, let's go to the phone lines right now, and I believe that Wheels has got for us a lovely lady over at the Autumn Haven Assisted Living Center, and that's Amy. Good morning, Amy. How are you? Good morning. I'm great. How are you, Zeb? I am fantastic, and uh, I'll bet you this weekend you're pretty busy over there. We sure are. We are excited. We are getting ready to take our residents uh, to the 4th of July Parade. Rupert has such great festivities, and we love to make sure our residents are part of that. You know, tell me a little bit, Amy, when people say assisted living center, what does that mean exactly? What it means is that uh, the the folks that live, that reside at Autumn Haven, they 
they need a little bit more care. Maybe it's been difficult for them to prepare their own meals. Maybe they need some more assistance in the shower, getting dressed. And those are the kind of the cares that we provide for our residents at Autumn Haven. You know, what about, uh, are there any qualifications of uh, people that can live there and be helped and assisted? Or do you have a criteria? Maybe you could explain that a little bit. So it it depends. Um, I'm the nurse for the facility as well as one of the owners. And I always come out and do what's called an assessment. I sit down with the family, I sit down with a potential client, and we go over and we talk about what their needs are. What kind of things do they need help with? And by doing so, I get a chance to to get to know them and also determine if they are going to be appropriate for our facility or not. Okay, now, once they go to the facility, I mean, this is a big transition in a lot of people's lives, and I'm sure that you open the doors and say, come and look at us and learn more. Is that right? Absolutely. We welcome the public and anybody who has any questions about assisted living to stop by our facility. We're located at 924 Christian Way. We're behind the Minidoka Memorial Hospital. And again, we we welcome anyone to to come in and to ask questions and take a tour of the facility. Well, tell us a little bit about the facility. Give us kind of a walkthrough on the radio, if you would, please. Okay. So when you pull up to the facility, you walk in the front doors. And as soon as you walk in, you're, you're greeted by our staff. We always have our staff are usually up front. Um, you will most likely see the residents. We have a, a great living room when you walk into the facility that you walk right into. We actually recently purchased a large uh, screen TV that hangs up on our wall so our residents can enjoy movies and watch the news. And then as soon as you also walk into the, your immediate left is the kitchen. We have a beautiful open kitchen and we have a great dining area for our residents. We are a 16-bed facility. Each room is private with your own private bath and your private closet. Okay, now, I understand, and I've been telling everybody, that you're the only locally owned and operated assisted living facility in the Minicash area. What does that mean? Oh, it's correct. One of the advantages is that um, myself, you know, we live in the area, and also our administrator, who is Angie Darrington, she... She lives in the Minicaja area, and so the, the people that are, are running the facility, we are locally, you know, we, we live here in the area. We are easy to access. Um, we understand, you know, the concerns that people have, and we support the community that, uh, that surrounds us, and we are very lucky to, uh, to be locally owned. What would be an average day in the life of a resident at Autumn Haven Assisted Living Center? I mean, once they get up in the morning, what kind of activities are available to them? So we have a variety of activities every day. Um, one of our favorite activities, especially now that the weather has warmed up, we spend a lot of time outside. We have a great, uh, fairly secluded uh, area that we're located in, and so walking outside is so easy. There's very minimal traffic. Uh, we have a beautiful front entrance. We've got brand new patio chairs, and we spend a lot of time outside. And we also have a beautiful patio in the back, and we've got brand new raised garden beds. Our residents have been helping us plant flowers, enjoying and watching them grow, and we have a garden back there that uh, we are anxiously waiting. The radishes are almost ready to be picked, and it's just been a, it's just been beautiful. In the fall. We ha- again, we, we have such beautiful weather. We, we spend a lot of time outside. We also have a great entertainment that comes to the facility. In fact, yesterday we had the singing group, the Troubadours. They come on the fourth Wednesday of every month, and they just provide great entertainment for, for our residents, and, and the staff enjoy it as well. We have a daily exercise program. When, when the weather changes, we do a lot of indoor activities. We have volunteers that come in from the community to do cards, bingo every monday night we have a family night and we have different churches that come in and rotate and do a program for our residents we we have a lot to offer everybody wow it sounds like it and the other thing i want to mention is i know that you really help support a lot of the local businesses too don't you we do in fact just recently we picked up a stocked up on meat from stokes we buy as much as we can locally with produce um we purchase a lot, like I said, from, from Stokes and from Smith's, and we really try to support our local businesses here. And, so, and we also uh, take our residents out to the Wilson Theater, to the OVAC Productions. 
We, we really do. We reach out and we support the community. Now, if somebody is listening and they want to call right now and find out more, give us the address and the telephone number and who they need to talk to. So our address is 924 Christian Way in Rupert. Again, we're located behind the Minidoka Hospital. Our telephone number is 436-3200. You can ask for Angie, Amy, or Alexis Wright, and she is our office manager. And we're happy to help you and answer any questions that you might have. And I think you'd agree with my tagline that I use, Autumn Haven Assisted Living Center. They're small compared to some, but with a bigger heart than most. What do you think of that? Oh, I love it. It's just it's perfect. It fits us just right. Amy, I want to wish you and everyone with Autumn Haven a very happy, safe, and really fun-filled Independence Day weekend, and thank you for coming on our program. Well, thank you for having me, and same to you. All right. Thank you much. Take care. You too. All right. Nice, nice lady there, and really good folks over at Autumn Haven Assisted Living Center, 924 Christian Way in Rupert, 436-3200. Oh, my goodness sakes, in just a moment, I'm going to send it over to Old Wheels at our main studio, and we've got a little break coming up at the bottom of the hour, and I certainly hope you have a wonderful time this weekend. The weather sounds like it's going to be good. Yeah, it's going to be hot. Yep, it's going to be hot. Make sure to take a lot of water, drink a lot of water, and just stay cool, but enjoy. There's a lot of things to do right here in the Magic Valley for this great Independence Day weekend. Right now, Wheels, take it away. And now, back to Zeb at the Ranch on AM 1230 KBAR. To reach Zeb, call 436-2244 or toll free 1-866-927-4587. And now, here is Zeb Bell. Oh, man, welcome back. And I get a chance to talk to an old friend on the radio right now, and he lives down in Elko, Nevada area, and he's going to talk to us all about an event that I was so privileged and really appreciated being a part of for many, many years, and that's the Silver State Stampede down in Elko, Nevada. Alki Mariluch, how in the dickens are you this morning? Well, I'm really good, Zeb. How are you doing today? I'm good. What's cooking down in Elko, Nevada for the next Silver State Stampede? Oh, we got a, we've got a lot of, a lot of things going on down here for, for that. You know, we'll have a the old West Bronx riding, and and uh, we have the um, the Wild Child. I don't know if you know him. Yes, I do. He's our barrel man. Yep. He does a motorcycle act, and and um, we have, of course, the PRCA rodeo and the the uh, tri tip dinner barbecue. Well, you know, Alki, let's kind of break it down one item at a time. And uh, why why is there so much popularity over the Old West Bronc Ride? And this event seems to have really taken a hold at your rodeo. And tell us a little bit about the rules and how they differ from the PRCA rodeo and some of the contestants that are involved. Well, well, those guys, most of the contestants, are are working ranch cowboys, the buckaroos, and they they get on the the saddle broncs in their everyday saddle that they they use for cowboying, and they can use two hands or one hand. They can they can fan the horse with their hat, and in the wildest wildest ride wins. You know, and they don't have to they don't start the horse out like in the PRCA. They don't have to put the spurs over the front of the shoulders and. And, and they're just wild, wild rides. Well, is there a pretty good competition for some pretty big bucks? I know in the years that I've been there, man alive, they got some great prizes and a pretty good paycheck. Right. Um, well, last last year we had 30, 31 riders signed up, but then we had fires, range fires, and two of them di- didn't make it. But uh, they, we had $3,000 added money. Plus, we um, the entry fees are one hundred seventy five dollars, and they get two two head. Everybody gets two head. Everybody rides on Thursday, and then the second go around, half of them go on Friday and half on Saturday during the rodeo. Um, you know, it, it pays pretty good to win. 
Now, how did this great we event... We have a Calcutta mm-hmm. that, that's really popular with the, with the local folks around here, too. Absolutely. Tell us a little bit about the tradition. I mean, the Silver State Stampede in Elko, Nevada, a little bit of the history uh, going way back to the early 1900s. Well, the the first stampede was called the Elko Rodeo. It was in 1912, and it was put on by the by a man named G.S. Garcia, who was a world-renowned spur and bit and saddle maker that, that had his business in Elko. And eventually, the business turned into Capriolas, and now they, they sell Garcia products. And so this is this year is our hundred and fifth year. It's hundred five years old, and and yeah, it's quite a long long lasting tradition to have that. No kidding. Now everything's going to kick off with the kickoff party before anything else starts. Tell us about the fun and the good eating at the kickoff party. Well, on on Thursday night we. Thursday evening, we the gates open about four o'clock, and we have a a local restaurant owner who who cooks tri tips for us, um, grill barbecues, tri tips, and he has the sides and everything, and so everybody has a has uh, you know it's a ten dollar dinner, and everybody comes in early, has the dinner, then we have the have the Calcutta. Then of course the mutton busting, and then we kick off the rodeo with uh, with the uh, old west bronc riding. And this year, something different we're doing is uh, we're having the ring of fear all three days. Usually, we just have it on Friday and Saturday. We're going to have it on Thursday night this year too. Uh, we have so many people that want to. You know. Answer. Now, let's talk a little bit about that ring of fear. I mean, people are sitting there going, what do you mean, ring of fear? Well, it really is a ring of fear. Tell us what the rules are and how they decide the winner. Well, we have a small small arena that we put on the, on the track, and we, we draw six, six circles in that arena, and one person stands in each circle, and then we turn loose. A Mexican fighting bull and 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 they're pretty hot. <laughs> and so what it is is the last person to stay in his circle. You can get one foot out, but if you get both feet out, you're you're out of it. So the last one wins wins the prize money for the day. And you know sometimes it takes a couple of minutes, and sometimes the bull clears them out in. You know, twenty seconds. Absolutely. Pretty wild. Absolutely, Alki, and and then that leads us up to, of course, the Silver State Stampede, PRCA sanctioned rodeo, and some of the top contestants in the world standings always show up at Elko. This is a great event. Yes, we we had last year we had we had thirty to thirty one in in every rough stock event and. You know that Evan Jane, the the guy from France, is one of the top bareback riders. He was there. Most of the top fifteen saddle bronc riders were there, and some and some top flight bull riders were there. And I and I know this year that Shane Crocker is one of the top bull riders. I, I I know he was he's committed to come because he wants to win those Garcia Spurs. Absolutely. You know, now let's stop right there and tell everybody about a commemorative poster that you've got this year because there's a guy on the poster that's riding a bronc that happens to be one of my best friends, and that's Billy Wines. Tell us a little bit about that poster. Well, I in the 1970s when Bill Wines was a pretty top, top flight bronc rider, they got a picture of him with his horse flipping over, and it was on T-shirts and hats, and you'd see it everywhere. And then Bill has been on this rodeo board for probably 30 years now, and as a tribute to him, we're using that picture, the black and white picture, but we're using that for uh, for our commemorative posters, and and it and it turned out really nice. It's, the tribute to Billy and you know 
it's just it looks pretty classy. You know, now after that rodeo's over and after the Ring of Fear, what about then? Did everybody go home or is there a place to dance and kick up their heels a little bit? Well, no, they they hang around quite a while. We have we have some live music as Jeff Palmer. He's he's out of Idaho. Um, Jeff Palmer band, they play live music and we have the the Cowboy Bar and and people stick around there until till probably later than they should. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, l- let me jump in and ask you this. Along with the Silver State Stampede, one of the great things that my wife really enjoyed when we were down there was that Western Trade Show. Are you going to have that again this year? We are, and it's going to be pretty cool um, The the person who is taking care of that told us the other night that she she's afraid she's going to have to cut some people off because we're going to run out of out of room over there. But yeah, it's right inside by the grandstands. It, and now with with the addition of that jumbotron that we put in last year, you can you can watch the rodeo while you're shopping you know it's it's just really slick anywhere anywhere in the fairgrounds you can see that see that 20 foot tv set absolutely now elke what about tickets how do people from out of the area how do they get tickets so that they make sure they don't miss a minute of the action down there in elko well you can we have ticket pre-sales you can buy tickets at the gate or you can buy tickets from from some businesses in town. The Chamber of Commerce has them, the Capriolas and the Boot Barn, ISA, and Roy's Market. They, they all sell tickets ahead of time for us. Okay. And you can get the meal tickets for Thursday. You can get the admission tickets, whatever you need from those places. I'll tell you what, folks, if you're out there in the listening audience and somebody says they want to see a great rodeo, they want to see the Old West brought back to life, it's right there at the Silver State Stampede in Elko, Nevada, July 13th through the 15th. Now, we're going to be talking to Elke again before the event takes place, but Elke, doggone it, it's good to talk to you, and I want you to say hello to everybody down there. I loved every minute of all the years that we spent down there in Elko. God bless you, and have a super Silver State Stampede. Well, I appreciate it. God bless you, too, and and hope to see you sometime soon. All right, Elke. I'll be talking to you, buddy. Take care. Thanks for being on the program. Okay. You bet. There is a super guy. He's been a good friend of mine for many, many years, the Marilouch family, and I thank him for coming on the program. Elke Marilouch down there at the Silver State Stampede, July 13th through the 15th, and believe me, (laughs) you're going to have fun down in Elko. Don't miss it. Right now, we're going to play a little bit of the weather forecast, and the weather forecast is brought to us this hour by our friends at Scarrow's Meats, 331 North Road, Jerome, the number to call, 324-7657. Or you can go to scarrowsmeats.com and see all the delicious meats that are available for you and your family, especially for this 4th of July weekend. And all the breakfast sausages and the bratwurst, oh, ho, ho, delicious. And that leaner, more economical than traditional bacon, buckboard bacon, check that out. Everything's great. Everything delicious at Scarrow's Meats. Right now, here's Gina with the weather. Today and tomorrow, fairly mild as we get into Saturday and Sunday. Temperature rising up into the 90s. Here's your weather forecast for Zebeth the Ranch. Lots of sunshine for today, a little on the breezy side. Winds out of the west, 10 to 20 miles an hour. That wind is not helping the wildfire suppression as we experience about five different wildfires going on in our area. So if you're wondering where all of the smoke is coming from and it's affecting your breathing, be aware that there's lots of fires going on. Sunny skies for today, high of 78. Tonight, clear skies, low 48. Tomorrow, sunny and 83. Looks like sunny and 90 for Saturday, close to 95 for Sunday. 
That's your weather for Zebeth Ranch. Oh, thank you, Gina. And Gina, you have a great Independence Day weekend. And the weather is brought to everybody by Scarrow's Meats. 331 North Road, Jerome. The number to call, 324-7657. Oh, it is so true. Don Scarrow and the rest of the crew changing the way we eat one delicious bite at a time. Absolutely excellent. Oh, Wheels, turn your microphone on for a minute. Um, I really appreciate the fact you're doing a great job for us. I want to have uh, an extended wish from Deanne and I to you to have a wonderful Independence Day weekend. And you're going to be hosting a kind of a patriotic extravaganza with Sharon on Monday. Well, thank you for that. And uh, I hope you and Deanne have a great Independence Day yourself. Um, but yes, you gave me the honor of taking control of the show on Monday, so that's what I plan on doing is a nice patriotic day as far as the 4th of July do, you know, goes, just so that way everybody can enjoy too. Okay, now we're going to kind of lead into the 4th of July and Independence Day in a few moments. Wheels, I told him, I said, it's your baby. You make the selection of some of the musical tunes leading out of our program this morning, and I'm going to do the Les Schwab spot, and then you, Mr. Wheels, are on the hook, okay? All right. All right, buddy. With me. Okay. Don't forget your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations. Doing the right thing matters to them, and they always do the right thing with the best of tires for you, for your pickup, SUV, cars, trailers, etc. They can and will provide the best of tread designs for your driving conditions. The best in brake service. That's not brag. That's a fact. The very best highly trained technicians will working on your brakes, front end alignment, shocks and struts, batteries, all of this and more, but the key word is always the best in service. Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family in Paul, Daniel on Pole Line in Twin Falls, and Randy on Overland in Burley. The best, your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers. They are. Wow. Uh, on behalf of Deanne and I, we want to extend to each and every person in our listening audience, whether it's here through KBAR 1230 or streaming live all over the United States and, for that matter, the world, uh, on our zebbell.com, I really hope that you take the time, take the time to just stop and look at that American flag. Look at that red, white, and blue Look at the stars and think about all the people that have sacrificed so much for you and me and everyone to have the celebration of Independence Day on the 4th of July. God bless this country. God bless everything that it has stood for in the past and hopefully will continue to stand for in the future. Thank you all to the listeners. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. And we, on behalf of my wife and myself, will be back here on July 5th with more Zeb at the Ranch. But right now we're going to turn it over to some real patriotic music with my buddy Wheels at the station. God bless you and your family. And remember, the way things were are the way things ought to be. Wheels, God bless you, man. Take it away.